Hey guys, Eb here. Um, we are picking up on the E36 that we have here. Um, there are a few little issues uh, um, with the car that we're gonna go ahead and take care of. Uh, and I'm just gonna go uh, real quick through those. Our power steering pump is making a little noise, so we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Now, we did want to install a new one, unfortunately, out of stock, so we got a rebuild kit. Um, also, the e-brake handle that broke uh one of the spring mechanisms popped out so we got a new one we're going to install and we're also going to uh, look at the pesky little airbag sensor uh because of the seat so we're going to go ahead and dive into that so uh yeah let's get uh, let's get going all right so here is the kit that we got from uh from bmw and that is just a full rebuild kit for the power steering pump and then we also have here the uh, the new brake handle we got it right here, the power steering pump. Uh, we're gonna remove this tray um, just to access it a little bit better. As you can see, we got a little bit of a, of a leak going on here and um, it's making the noise and it's also pressurizing the uh, tank up top and it's starting to, uh, to leak down a tad bit. Yeah, so all we have to end up doing is just remove it and rebuild it. So everything else has pretty much already been replaced, well, what, about a year ago or yeah. so when we Less did it? All right, so I got the cap off uh, for the, uh, the idle puller here, and uh, I got a nice long um, eight mil iron wrench. And all I'm gonna end up doing is pulling it down and getting the belt off. And I'm going to end up leaving the accessory belt. Um, I'll be able to install this uh, with this in place. So I, know, don't, I don't need to, to remove it. So take a little bit of pressure bringing it down. All right guys, so what I've done is I have already loosened the two bolts up top and I've also removed this one here. And what I ended up doing, I just uh, loosened the upper banjo and then the lower banjo just to try to get uh, some of the fluid out and draining it. And, uh, and there we go. Just trying not to make too much of a mess. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a process just to let it drain. All right, let me see what we're, this one here. All right, so um, first remove the pulley. So we're gonna take these uh, three uh, 13 mil bolts out. And I already know that they has four bolts to take this bracket off. We'll get to those uh, once this is off and then we'll have to take this bracket off um, towards the end a little bit. So let's get straight to it. What we're calling this, this is the snout and this is the, the back of the body. So let's just see how much of a mess it's gonna come out. And there you go right there. So the O-ring kit, we have this O-ring here. This one's already coming out. And then we have this O-ring kit as well. What we'll have to end up doing is removing this section here off and get to, um, the snap ring and uh, you can't see it right now, but those are little fingers um, for the pump. Um, little blades, I guess is the way I can describe it. Looking at this, um, it pries up. So I have plastic uh, pry tools that I'm gonna pop this out and then also remove this gasket as well. So I'm gonna get right to that. I take the O-ring out, I'm using a, a plastic uh, little pry tool. That way I don't uh, scar that piece right there. Oh, there's the other piece right there. There we go. As I kept looking to find it, here's a spot that could be pried on. And it, this one came out kind of easy. So, and there she pops out. All right, there's the back end of that. 
So I'm going to put that right there. All right, now here is the little, little fingers that are going to come out. This little clip is not a, uh, like one of the clips that has a little eyelids on it so you could grab it. So it's going to take a little bit of a couple little screwdrivers to be able to get that open um, or get that off. So let me grab those little tools and see if I can make it happen easily. Thank goodness we got a, a new one. All right. So that one I'll set aside. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> All right. Just got to get the little fingers now. All right. You can see you can see those little ones right there, and that's the other section. Now, by dropping that out, the um, uh, the shaft itself just pulled out from underneath, uh, and the seal is behind that shaft. All right, so we're now we're going to go back to when we get this removed, since now it's simple and easy. There we go. All right, so there she goes. So that's my top section and leaving that like that. And now we'll flip it over. There is the seal. Okay. And there is the shaft itself. As you can see, there's just a little bit of a wear, which is normal because that's where the, that's where the seal sits. And uh, nothing looks out of the ordinary from the, sh from the shaft itself. So what I end up doing is I, I end up trying to find something uh, that's going to go underneath uh, this section here and behind here and pry it up. So by doing and using this, this particular pick here, I was able to get it in here and it just pried on out. Now, I gotta make sure that it's, it's, in, it's gonna be, technically, if I bring it around this way, just like that. And what you're doing is then you're prying up on it and you're putting the pressure on the seal, which is gonna push down and then pull this up and then she popped right on out. So there's the old seal. I already installed the new one. What I ended up using, I grabbed the socket that's about the same diameter and I tapped it in, got it all smooth, got the shaft in all the way, and I've got the rotating piece here with the little fingers on there. To get these back in the same place, um, you have to look at the edge here. Now, um, it's gonna be very tough to put it in there, but the best way I could explain it and I've read is the smooth edge is what goes outward. So the smooth edge is going to be guiding on this rim right here, okay? So when you look at it, and it's a little tough, but once it's all in, you should be able to see a nice rounded edge on the outside. I hope you could end up seeing that, but that's the best way I could explain it. If you look at the other side of this disc, of the uh, little flap, it's not smooth it, you can tell it's just regular metal and it is technically sharp edges and this one's just a tad bit smoother so that's how they go back in so we just slide it in and that's it so now we're going to end up doing now that it's orientated in the right position we're going to go ahead and work on the uh to replace the front seal and uh, start assembling everything also i forgot to mention earlier uh there is an alignment mark on the snout and the body. So if you ever do decide to do this on your own, you just gotta align this one back together, which here's the other piece right there, right there. So that's the alignment. You can see the witness marks. And then what we have is this hole here. So if you look here, I can see that there is the hole right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clock it just like so. And then I'm just gonna slide the pins in place if they will slide in. There you go. And she's all back together now. So now we're gonna put this back on a vise because I know we're gonna need it so that we could put the little snap ring in place. 
Okay, so got the clip on. It was not easy. It was a pain in the butt. Tried different methods, but finally was able to get it in. And so she's pretty much at this point uh, assembled. Um, so what we've got now is the new seals on the new uh, little plate here. So the rubber gasket itself. I'm going to take a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the uh, little lube that's on top here. And there she is. So that seal is in place. And this puppy, all it does is just falls. All right guys, so she's pretty much all back together. So the next thing is just to throw it back in there. Um, so as we're building this, Mike and I are talking back and forth and uh, the whole thing behind this, it was making noise. And the kit that we've got is a seal kit. So we, uh, we're gonna see if it's gonna actually fix it. So we're gonna install it, bleed it, and then uh, see if she makes noise. Okay, so I came over, stopped the construction project at Maddie's house um, because we couldn't get enough, we were at too much negative camber in this car. We took it for alignment. They said they couldn't get enough, get it back to close to spec, which should be about, I think it's one and a half, 1.6 degrees. And we're like at 2.9 or 3.1 or something like that. So Matt talked to, what's his name, Mike? Barry. Barry. Um, and he says that what you can do is take the left hand side, put it on the right and put the right hand on the left. And then you can get some more, I won't say positive camber, but you can dial back the negative camber to get it within spec. The way this is set up is really for track probably, which is where you want a bunch of negative camber. So we're going to do that. We're going to pull, pull them, pull them apart, swap them. So the right is on the left and the left is on the right. And then we'll take it to get a line and see if that, that gets it where, within uh, factory spec. We are getting close to, we've now put the right hand on the left hand and the left hand on the right hand. So theoretically, this right. is gonna be able to dial in some more, uh, some le less negative camber, because we had way too much. So we've talked to the guy that knows and he says this, this is what you can do. Now I don't know if that means he's done it. At or this point, if we're following instructions. Yep, exactly. Right now, what, what, where do you think we're at? Look, right now we're we're almost square. Look down at the ca at the rotor. It, a lot of camera on this end. This has probably, none. Probably in. This has none. It looks like. Yeah, right now we're uh, we're positive camber. Or um, no, actually a little negative. Just a little bit though, not much. You know the worst part of it is. What is the worst part? That you can see, <laughs> right, left, left, yeah. right. Yeah. So somebody's gonna be like, man, these got these got these are wrong. Yeah, that's you're right about that. So we're gonna get everything set. We pulled as much camber out of it as we could. So we're gonna set it on the ground, see how it looks. No, we're we're good. Oh uh, yeah, that. That's much better. All right, guys, so to sum her up, uh, we got the coolant sensor that uh, was bad. We went ahead and got that replaced. The power steering pump is, system is back together. As of right now, by just having it on the lift and rotating, we got all the air out and it, uh, the noise has stopped. But we will know for sure once we get it on the road to make sure everything is good. But it does feel good as of right now. For the handbrake, um, this one um, is just a tad bit different. So what we've got is right in here when you remove the ash, ashtray itself, which you can see there's one ashtray already there. And then I have the front ashtray with down there towards the bottom. So you just slide it out, both ashtrays, and then you're gonna have on this one, there is a Phillips, which I have them, I already took them out. They look like this, they're plastic, so they just screw out, be careful. Um, and it just, the, these two come out. And then when those come out, this just, this tray pops out. Now there is a light as you can see it right here and the light goes right here in that small little hole 
right there so it just slides right on out so i'm going to put that one right there and this one right here um same thing the ashtray just slides right on out this one is is just slightly on there there is a uh a, a slot where the front goes into the front and then there also is a light down there light is out and then this piece is now completely out so now we have this piece i got it already out and here it is here's the little clip so you want to go on the back side of it and you just want to ever so gently just trying to pry it and pull it up um, you do not want to do it from the front because the front has the dip on it which is the catch hook in the front so once that is out of the way and we just move it forward and then we have down here towards the bottom and you can see i got one phillips screwdriver in here all right so those are up so now for the front there is one or two screws up here so i've already got the uh, cover off and it's just going to take getting these that little silencer off little padding okay so i got one screw here underneath the uh underneath the um, uh, hazard button but the screw is missing so right now this should technically slide out now well, there we go so just got to make sure that the lights come out and pull the e-brake up and here we have the new piece so this is going to be very simple we have to release the e-brake cables which are here and here and then we have the one bolt here and one here and then they got to just take this wire which is your light for the e-brake set that aside all right so now we're doing the nine mil and then the 12 mil as a lock look how much much quicker it is yeah and we gotta go to the next one here's the 13 mil So for the wire, all you do is just pinch this piece down and there the wire comes right on out. And I remember the orientation of where the wire goes. You don't want to put that in a way to where you will sever it down the road. All right, so there's one more, where is it at? Right here. So there's one hidden right down here. I don't know if you could catch it in the camera, it's right down there. And there she is. So I'm gonna go grab the new one. I'm gonna swap this over as well. Yeah. All right, so I took the bracket off the old one. Uh, the new one does not come with it. There we go. You just gotta pull the e-brake up to be able to get it in there. Fortunately, at the beginning I wasn't, so. Look at that, we got a nice working button now. All right, so now it's time for this. Okay, so it, it slides right off. I cut the zip tie off. That's the old one, and here's the new one. All right, so here we go with that. Um, I'm gonna put the zip tie here. So I'm gonna bring this forward. I'm gonna try to get this up top, nice and smooth. So I'm pulling down towards the bottom and folding the bottom. All right, so here's the plastic handle and there's the nub right there, a little stopper. Let's see how she looks. Okay. 
Okay, so here we are ready to install it and it's just gonna be the reverse of how we took everything out. So the first thing, of course, what I'll be doing just to give you a, a little heads up is sliding these cables into the little holes right here. One on each side. And then what you can just make sure that this wire goes this way and have that right there. And at this point, it's just install the three 13 mil bolts that you have here and reassemble everything back together. And the uh, the handbrake is pretty much back at, back installed. Uh, luckily for us, that one screw was missing here. So we're gonna try to find the screw and, and put it in there. So that way she's pretty much back to, to uh, 100%. Okay, so there we are. Everything is, is done at this point. The only thing that we were gonna end up doing was the airbag light, uh, wrong connector. So we're gonna have to worry about that at a later point. It's just having to order that, uh, that little resistor to, for the occup occupancy uh, light. Uh, but yeah, everything else is done. And we're just gonna go for a quick little test drive to make sure the power steering is all good. Yep, so now we got to uh, change the, uh, the hats on the uh, camber plates and it looks like the camber We've got at least close to OEM um, camber, so. It's been a few days. Um, so if it's been a few days, that pretty much tells it our test drive did not go well. So let's take a look underneath the car. What we end up having to do is we had to get a different rack. Um, what happens when once we did our test drive, three quarters of the way uh, was was awesome and by the time we started getting closer we started hearing the pump make a little bit of noise and when we brought it in and checked it the fluid was a little low but when we started adding more fluid and we looked underneath the car and especially when we put it on the lift you could see all the oil has shot out from the boot here and it at, at this point when you look at it you can't tell as good but when it was fresh the whole oil the disc back there was just covered in power steering fluid Look at the rack that we got here. So we got the new boots, we got the new inner rods. We're gonna end up using the newer rods that are already installed on the current uh, Z, um, uh, the 712 rack, the yellow tag. And uh, we got the new crush washers again. So, um, so yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and start the process all over again. So this was a new... The, yes, this was a rebuilt one. Um, originally when, how it first started when it was installed about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe not so much a year and a half ago. So, um, so yeah, unfortunately, I think the cars probably only have had six, 700 miles on it at the most. All right, so we're not gonna go and film the whole installation of the, the rack as we've already did this before. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the link uh, to that in case you wanna go and look at that. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reassemb uh, reassemble everything. And uh, like I said, just start installing it. Okay, so we got the, uh, the rack back in. Um, it's been filled up. So at this point, we're just going to turn it on and um, uh, turn the steering wheel right to left and uh, get any of the air pockets back out. And then again, for second time around, we're gonna do a test drive and make sure everything is good as we got to take it to the alignment the following day, which is tomorrow. All right, so I just took a quick peek underneath just to make sure everything was good, nothing out of the ordinary, uh, no, no oil leaks or anything. So, uh, so yeah, as of right now, we're just gonna go take it for a spin uh, once we move a little bit of, uh, of a stuff behind us and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, Ab, E36 is back on the road. Yes, sir. New, uh, new rack. Did we find a new rack to replace his rack? We got all that work down? Yeah, okay, we got okay, that work okay, okay, good. Yeah, well, thank you for bailing us out. Yeah, that's gonna, that's from a race car. So it's just been sitting there, been collecting the parts. So, so this, this project or this failure, if you will, has made me rethink. We're gonna end up doing a giveaway. I think we're gonna hold on to the car a little longer. I feel like it's not complete yet. I still need to finish the stereo. I need to fix the airbag light. So, so the camber's fixed, which is real help. The um, the coolant sensor's fixed. Yep. What's the difference? Is this the same exact rack that I had? Yes. Okay. It's a 712 uh, yellow tag. Z so, ZHP. Yes. From a Z3. Um, it's um, 
from BMW 46 330, 3, 330Is, 330Cis, Got it, and okay. uh, the Z, the ZHP packaged uh, E46. Got it. And so it takes the it take it changes the steering ratio. Yeah, which well. is from the stock OEM one mm -hmm. to the yellow tag night and day difference yeah. night and day difference so what's your assessment on this car have we done a decent job is it you've yeah. you do a lot of e36s i tell you what here's the thing okay the e36s i've worked on totally different yeah. this thing is you could get off it underneath yeah i mean you guys went through it underneath and it was like that before i even started working on it yeah. the last year like over, over a year ago and this I just can't believe you you've given it away. That's the part that's like wow. But yeah. you know, for a car like this, I just I I don't want to drive it, and it's yeah. just so pristine. It's just yeah. I mean, because it's been painted, I guess you could drive it and just repaint it again later if you had to. You know. It just looks so beautiful right now. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for bailing us out again. We got yep. the car fixed up. It's ready to go. I'm going to drive it around for the next few months. I just feel like with this car, I need to have it complete on the road. I feel like I'm rushing to do a giveaway in January, so yep. we're going to push it to September to do our, our fall giveaway. I'm also a little nervous that I have that 997 there that I'm going to be you know, laser focused on. I don't want to get this to get cannibalized by that. Yep. We just did a giveaway on the M2. So I think that uh, I think I'm gonna hang on to it for a little while. What Wob was hoping, I'm sure you're hoping, is that I change my mind and just keep yes, the thing. Yes, that's exactly. Put, put put more miles on it. So, yeah. so I hate to give it or break somebody's heart who could win it. Yeah. But it it is just if you can do it, just let it sit there and drive it every once in a blue moon. Unfortunately yeah. for me, I'd want to drive it a lot. Yeah. And that's the whole part. It's just it's just too beautiful. Yeah. Way too beautiful. There's too many people who don't know how to drive on a road right now. It was yeah. it's not probably the person driving it it's just other people i think it's insured for like thirty thousand dollars or something <laughs> oh, like that. that's all they'd give to me I, I, I actually i think this is in the classic program was with, with um with uh, with the uh, state farm so i think i might have it at like 75 grand or something yeah. which still wouldn't cover it yeah. I mean, you can cover half market, of it yeah it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, E36, more content coming as we uh, you know, get it buttoned up. I've got to fix the stereo, get the airbag light taken care of, and then you know, hopefully drive it around a little bit. That'll be the fun. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Yeah.